12.57 volts. Yep, not very charged. I gotta say, I'm very happy with this. This is definitely worth $15. And it's working like a charm. Quite a while ago, I really made a nice score. For $15, I got 10 of these 6 inch by 6 inch, 0 0.5 volt, 5 amp solar cells, or photo photovoltaic panels. That's about 40 watts for $15. That's not bad, and that was including shipping. But unfortunately, these are almost useless by themselves. The thing is, the solar cells themselves are, are, are extremely cheap. Whenever you, The thing that makes solar panels so expensive is the housing that protects them from the elements. So that's what we also have to work on. At first, I was going to use this steel shelf that I found. It would fit the cells perfectly. We'd have five by two. That'd be ten total. And we'd have this plexiglass over it to keep it safe. And then I would just seal it up with some silicon sealant or whatever, and it should be pretty good. But then I discovered I had this. This is from a funeral home. You would have the person who died, the, the picture of them, in there, and some, like saying what they did or something about their life or whatever for, for the visitation. But this was in the trash. It was free just because the, the, uh, the locks were a little bit broken. But I think that would be perfect for my solar panels because all I have to do now is seal it up. I just add some sealant around here, which this pushes in because it's spring-loaded on the other side, so I could always easily change out the plastic or whatever. Or actually take out this foam right here so I'd have more surface area. Then on the back over here, this is wood, so that would probably not be too good in weather, but I could spray some really heavy duty paint over it. Now this is foam core board, and foam core board, it's plastic, so it won't let water through. So I think this would be a good way to start to house the solar cells. Since I lucked out with that, now let's work on tabbing the solar cells. Tabbing is whenever you put the wires onto the contacts on both sides. As you can see, I've already tabbed this cell, and I have to say, it came out pretty good. I just used 20 gauge wire from an old power supply that I took apart. And I'm, I'm only going to connect them on the bottom row, because all these squares are connected together this is the positive side and all these ones are connected together that's the negative side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each cell and I'm going to hook three wires coming out the bottom that way I can take them and I can lay them over each other so the bottoms of this one can go on the top of this one and I can solder them onto here that's a pretty good voltage unfortunately I'm only going to get 5.5 volts at the max because I only have 10 of these in series. If I, ha if I would have actually thought right, I would have bought three sets of these. That way I'd have 30, and I could actually charge a car battery directly. But as it is now, I'm going to have to use a step-up transformer to bring the voltage from 5 volts to like 15 volts in order to charge a car battery. But oh well. Well, that didn't take hardly any time at all. That's pretty awesome. I think that'll fit perfectly, and I can always have room to add five more cells if I get them. Let's see how that closes. That's gonna be awesome. So now it comes time to make this thing waterproof. I'm gonna use some of this Loctite stick and seal outdoor adhesive. Uh, I'm going to attempt it at least. I don't know if sure if this will work properly. It'll take 24 hours to cure. I'll put it on the inside along here and I'll put it on the corners where these two bits of metal meet. So I'll put it along here and I'll put it all along in the inside and then on the outside. Let's get to work.
So while this front part is finishing drying and curing, we'll work on putting the solar cells onto the back panel. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder them into five cell chains and then we'll put those two five cell chains on, onto here. Now instead of actually connecting the cells themselves to the backing material, because if I were to use like sticky tape or something just to connect the cells to it, they're so fragile that I think if I were to try to take them off to use them for another project or if I try to change it a little bit, it would most likely break the, the solar panels. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cells here and I will put zip ties around the wires connecting the cells. That way the cells aren't directly held on here, but they're held on by the wires. So if I really need to get them off, I can just clip the wires and take them off. So now I'm going to attempt my zip tie method and see if it actually works. And there you go, pretty solid. Or, or at least it's as solid as, it, as it's gonna get. The sun is almost down. Let's see what voltage we get. 5.4 volts, not bad at all. Now I'll switch over to the amp setting. an amp that's that's not bad at all especially for this lighting right here because we don't have it's basically in the shadows so here's the finished item I took some foam core and put it here so there it would stop the plastic from put from pr putting pressure onto the solar p cells and they're held on with the zip ties I have the wiring coming through here to some holes in the back and I just got a little jumper cable connecting the ends down there because it's not gonna be holding that much power it is a very nice day today, and we have plenty of sun. There's like a few clouds, but oh well. It's a nice day to test out the solar panel. So here it's facing the sun, and I have this little 3.5 volt to 30 volt step up transformer. It'll take in any, anything from 3.5 uh, volts to 29 volts and it'll put out anywhere from 4 volts or 5 volts to 30 volts. So I'm using this, I'm connecting it up to here to step up the voltage. Let's connect it up. I have it turned off and now let's slowly bring up the voltage so we can see how high it'll go. So 
So it's peaking at about 350 milliamps of current. That's not too bad. Then again, it is pretty cloudy today, so maybe on a fully clear day, it'd be it'd give more power. What I might do is just have this on, uh, ha have this panel, which feeds five volts, charge four volt lithium ion cells, and then I'll set it on, on like a, a sensing circuit. So whenever the lithium ion cells get close to full, then this will turn on. It'll drain the power from the four volt lithium cells into the 12 volt b battery, and then this will continue to to fill it. Because as it is right now, I'm going to have to adjust the amperage setting depending on how bright it is outside, because when it dims, this isn't given enough power, so the voltage drops and it kind of messes up. That might fix that problem. But still, it's doing pretty good. Ooh, it's coming along nicely. I say let's take this battery off. Since this one is mostly charged, anyway. Let's try a different one that most likely isn't as charged. Hmm, 12.57 volts, yep, not very charged. Let's see where it goes. Well, it's going pretty good. It's, it's already at, it's already 0.2 volt above what it was before. I was thinking, See, I'm wanting to use that to charge my electric bicycle. Okay, so my electric bicycle, with its first 9 amp hour pack that I made last year, it went 20 miles on that. That 9 amp hour 48 volt pack was 442 or so watt, uh, watt hours. So 442 divided by 20 would be about like 22 or so, I think. Yeah, about, about 22. So, th so for every, I, I, every mile, with my electric bike takes 22 watt hours of energy. That means that this thing, every uh, like six and a half of uh, five and a half hours that it runs, uh, at least five and a half hours that it runs at full pa at full power, it'll give me one more mile on my bicycle. Now that my solar panel is working, I'm going to build myself a charging station out of this old late 1960s or early 1970s petrol pump. I think that'd be pretty awesome and pretty ironic that it would be now ser serving el electricity instead of petrol. I figure I can put a couple deep cycle batteries in there, or what I can do is I can build a box next to it that'll hold all my batteries, because I'm just going to throw all my batteries in there. It'll have about 1200 amp hours, which is quite a bit, because I have about 8 truck batteries, a bunch of small ones. It'll, it'll not only keep them charged, but it, it'll also act as a power bank. Where I'm going to put it is over here because underneath my wood pile, I'll, I'll finish burning off all that stuff this summer and I'll, I'll put it on the big concrete slab that's covering the well. That'd be perfect because I, I'm not going to be moving. I'm not going to be filling in the well anytime soon. And then I can have a wire up on the tree going over to the house where I might have the solar panels up there. Or I might have them somewhere else. I haven't really figured out what would be the best spot. I may, in fact, put the solar panels over here because this area of the yard doesn't have that much blocking it. What I might do is I might put a stake down on the ground and have it going up about like 10 foot or so and have a rota rotation thing so the solar panel can follow the sun. I'll have several of them that way I can mow around it and it won't really get in the way of the yard. Well anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya! That, that thing pulls two and a half amps. That's pretty good.